Hello everybody, you're very welcome again to EnglishLogica.com's vocabulary building series. In this video, we are going to look at some vocabulary related to eating. As usual, we split our vocabulary into two sections. The first one is synonyms for eating and the second idioms related to eating. Let's get started with the synonyms. We split our synonyms as well into common use and advanced exams language. Common use section is for everyday spoken English and the advanced exams is for more sophisticated language that you might find in exams like GRE, GMAT, LSAT, etc. The words we're going to cover then in common use are munch, gobble, nibble, devour, snack, peck, stuff, graze and binge. And there's some more on the next page, but in the advanced exams we'll cover masticate and gnaw. And then the rest of the common use then, gorge, scoff, feast, pick at, and wolf down. And the last two then are phrasal verbs. So let's get started with our common use synonyms. The first word is munch. This is to eat noisily and steadily. So munching is noisy and sometimes annoying for other people. It's a steady process where people might take a long time to break up their food before swallowing it. Our examples, example one, I was trying to hear the movie, but there was a guy munching on snacks behind me and it made it difficult for me to hear the quiet parts. Example two, the kid sat down to munch happily on his food while his mom cleaned the kitchen. Our next word is gobble. This is to eat noisily and quickly. Gobbling your food might be messy as you stuff it in your mouth and pieces might be falling out or you could be spitting while you're eating. It's not nice. So example one, the boys were in such a hurry to get back out and play that they gobbled up their food and left the table in a mess. Example two, slow down. You'll choke if you keep gobbling your food like that. Our next word is nibble. This is to eat with small or careful bites. So you might be reluctant to eat something, okay, so that's you're hesitant or you're not sure about eating it. So you could nibble at it to check if you like the taste. Example one, the mouse was nibbling on the electric cord for hours until it was eventually electrocuted and the power went out. Example two, she's not eating properly lately. She just nibbles at energy bars from time to time. Our next word is devour. This is to eat quickly and hungrily. When you eat something completely and leave nothing, you devour it, often without chewing properly before swallowing. Example one, the hungry pack of wolves completely devoured the deer within hours. Example two, thanks for your help cooking the dinner. Our guests absolutely devoured it and everyone said it was lovely. Our next word is snack. This is to eat a small amount of food. So a snack is just something to keep your hunger at bay and snacking, so the verb to snack, snacking is the act of eating something small, usually between regular meals. Example one, I'm not really hungry. I've been snacking all day. Example two, well, I don't want to spoil my appetite, so I might just have a little snack to keep the hunger away. Our next word is peck, and this is to bite small pieces from food. It's mainly only used when talking about birds. So think of the woodpecker pecking at the tree to get at the insects inside. Example one, the birds are out there pecking at our vegetables. We need to keep them away or we won't be able to grow anything. Example two, the small birds peck away at the bark of the tree until they can get at the insects inside. Our next word is stuff. And to stuff yourself is to eat until you're full. If you stuff your face, you eat too much, usually making a mess. So stuff your face is a popular expression. If you are stuffed, you're so full of food that you feel you can't move. It might make you tired. Example one, you'd better not stuff yourself before dinner. I spent hours making it, so I want you to eat it all. Example two, can't eat another bite. I'm absolutely stuffed. Our next word is graze. 
and this is to eat randomly and selectively. Most grass-eating animals graze, pulling vegetation at random from around them to feed on it. If a person is said to be grazing, they are picking from a variety of food. Example one, people have started presenting their wedding guests with grazing tables so they can pick what they'd like to eat. Example two, we just grazed at the hotel buffet. We weren't really in the mood for eating. The next word is binge. This is to eat too much over a prolonged period. Binging is eating or drinking a lot, usually too much, over a given period. You might have heard people talking about binging a Netflix series. This is to, it means watching it all in one go. So it's considered too much. Example one, oh, my stomach is killing me. That's what I get for binging on all that ice cream. Example two, we bought lots of crisps and chocolate and fizzy drinks. We're going to binge on it all while watching a movie. Our next word is gorge. This is to eat to the point of sickness. If you gorge on your food, you eat it too fast and you eat too much, probably making yourself sick in the process. Example one, the lions were falling asleep in the shade after gorging themselves on an antelope. Example two, don't gorge on that chocolate, you'll make yourself sick. Our next word is scoff. This is to eat greedily and noisily. Scoffing your food is noisy and can often be considered rude. Children often scoff food at parties or if they're in a hurry. It's just one example here. He's always scoffing down his food. He's so loud when he eats and he acts like he never gets fed. Our next word is feast. And as a, as a verb, this is to eat a lot of varied food. So a feast, the noun, was a way for rich and powerful people to show off in the medieval or even ancient world. There was often far too much food for the guests to eat. Example one, there was a great feast laid out for the celebrations with lots of different roasted meats and cooked vegetables and cheeses and breads all over the table. Example two, okay everyone, let the feasting begin. Our next entry then is a phrasal verb, pick at. And this means to eat small amounts of varied food. Similar to a bird pecking at things, a person might be said to be picking at food if they sample a small amount here and there amongst a variety of food. Example one, I wish you'd eat more. You're just picking at that dinner. You've hardly eaten anything. Example two, when my daughter lost her taste, she only picked at her food. We couldn't get her to eat properly. Next phrasal verb is wolf down. This is to eat greedily and without chewing. So the clue is here. Imagine a pack of wolves tearing apart their prey and not stopping to chew it properly. Swallowing rapidly is like wolfing down your food. Example one, I can't believe you're already finished your dinner. You must have wolfed it down. Example two, if you keep wolfing down your food like that, you'll get it stuck in your throat. Now let's move on, move on to the advanced exams synonyms. First word is masticate. And masticate just means to chew. It's a more medical terminology for chewing. And you might hear it spoken by a dentist or in academic circles. So example one, the dentist checked my molars to determine how strong my mastication was. Example two, food needs to be masticated fully before swallowing. The next word is gnaw. So the G is silent in gnaw. This is to bite or nibble persistently. This is usually used in relation to rodents or small animals with sharp little teeth gradually eating away at something. Just one example. The rat gnawed at the wood at the back of the cupboard until it made a hole it could push through. As usual with our synonyms, we show this uh, degrees table. Uh, these are about the, the levels of intensity uh, of these synonyms. So across the top are the common use words and along the bottom then are the, uh, the advanced exams language. So you'll see at the top left then to nibble or pick at or peck, this is low intensity eating. And then as you move from left to right, things get a little bit more intense. You'll see devour, wolfing down and 
binging and gorging to much more intense uh, levels of eating and not and masticate just uh, in the low there in the advanced. So we're going to look at some idioms related to eating. The ones we're going to cover are make a pig of yourself, eat us out of house and home, eating out of your hand, eat, breathe and sleep, eat your words, eat someone or something for breakfast, what's eating you, eating me up inside, dog eat dog world and won't bite you. The first one, make a pig of yourself. Okay, kids, you can go to the buffet table, but don't make pigs of yourself. You'll still have to eat your dinner when we get home. So making a pig of yourself is eating too much or eating very messily, maybe. You can just imagine a pig uh, eating a lot of stuff. So to eat us out of house and home, this is to eat everything that we have. It's a, it's a what's called, a, you might say, a hyperbolic expression. It's a little bit exaggerated. So I can't believe there's no food left. You've only been back from college for two days and you've eaten us out of house and home. So all the food is gone. So eating out of your hand. And this one is figurative. It's not actually about eating. It's about having people doing whatever you want uh, for you. I have a feeling he'll do what you want him to. He loves you so much, so I'm sure you'll have him eating out of your hand. Okay, the idea is that whatever she would ask for, that he would do it for her. So this one is to eat, breathe and sleep something. So if you're eating, breathing and sleeping something, you are obsessed with it. It's something you always think about. It fills your life. It completely consumes you. So he's absolutely obsessed with his work. He eats, breathes and sleeps that job. He really needs to take a break. Next one is eat your words. Again, this is not about eating. I'll show you how wrong you were. When you see what I've discovered, you'll be forced to eat your words. And it just means that you'll be forced to, to take back what you said and to uh, apologize really for what you said. To eat someone for breakfast. So this is very much that you'll, you'll completely, figuratively that you'll devour them, but you, that you'll defeat them in whatever the competitive activity is. Oh my God, look at the size of my opponent. How am I supposed to win this fight? He'll eat me for breakfast. Next one is what's eating you. So this is about what's troubling you or what's getting you down or what's on your mind. Hey, how are you? You look really down. What's eating you? Is there something on your mind? Eating me up inside. So this is about something that troubles you internally or, you know, emotionally something that really has had a traumatic effect on you. It happened years ago, but I feel so guilty about it and so ashamed. It's eating me up inside and I find it hard to sleep. Next one, a dog eat dog world. So this is the idea that it's a, it's a cutthroat world that, that we live in. You might hear in, in relation to business or something like that, that it's people will really, it's really, really difficult to succeed. You have to work really hard in this business to get noticed. Otherwise, you'd be torn to pieces. It's a real doggy dog world. So you can see how figurative that is. Our last idiom then is won't bite you. There's no need to be afraid of her. Why don't you go over and talk to her? She won't bite. So it's just that idea that someone won't snap your hand off, or, you know, or that they're not going to be aggressive, that they're not as bad maybe as you've, you've heard that they are. Okay. So that's our vocabulary related to eating. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Twitter and like and subscribe us here on YouTube. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments box and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Take care.